Hello, Helen here. I've put this video together um, after the last card I made. I used um, a silicon mould to make some little butterflies to go on my card and I said that I would um, show you some products that I use in those and also some um, other types of embellishments that I've been making for my cards just thought that you might be interested to maybe have a go yourself um, if it's not the sort of thing you want to do and you just want to stick to paper crafts and die cutting and things then this probably isn't the video for you but um, hopefully you'll get something out of it and um, some of you might be just as interested as I've been. Now this is definitely not my idea um, I saw it on a YouTube tutorial um, Colleen at 47CMC was demonstrating it using modelling paste and also um, caulking so um, I thought I'd have a go and see what I could use that I, either I had or was able to get so um, do check out her channel I'll put the link below in the description. My first attempt at this was with this Atelier moulding paste that I already had started using for stencils so I had a go with that and I it actually was quite successful uh, maybe not quite as flexible as some of the products I'm going to show a bit later but the other product that I've also had was gold this golden light modelling paste um, that works really well and it's actually whiter than some of the other products and then the last one that I ended up going and buying was this this Liquitex flexible modelling paste. Now I actually said modelling paste for the light um, golden light but it's actually golden light moulding paste. So it gets a little bit confusing but they really are a very similar product. But the product I've had the most luck with is this Sally's um, No More Gaps. It's a filler. We call them a filler here. Um, in other countries they're called, it's called caulking. It's an acrylic product that you use um, to seal up around maybe windows or in the bathroom around basins and things like that. It's very easy to use. It's very spreadable. Um, it comes out very easy from your moulds and it's also um, very flexible. You can even roll it and it doesn't seem to damage very easily. So it's a great um, product to use. I'll start by showing you using the golden light moulding paste. Um, it's very like um, just any moulding paste that you use with a stencil. So you just spread it on with a palette knife um, and make sure you get it in all the little gaps and areas. Um, I usually make sure that I um, use this palette knife in different directions to make sure you're getting in it in all the, the little holes and spaces. Um, spread it out and then once you're happy with how it's all filled you can take off the excess off the top, um, scrape it off and pop, pop it back in your jar. So once you've fin finished spreading the moulding paste onto your mould um, you really need to put it aside for around about 24 hours. Um, some dry quicker than that but um, to get it really dry right from the underneath you really need to leave it 24 hours. The Sally's No More Gaps is available here in New Zealand in your hardware stores um, but apparently Colleen from 47CMC said um, in America you can get this product called DAP Alex Fast Dry and she's been using that and it works re very similar by the sounds of it um, and it's caulking over there um, but don't get a silicon only filler it can have a little bit of silicon in it but a silicon on a silicon um, mold is going to um, stick and you're never going to get it out so it needs to be a, mainly acrylic based. The one thing I found with using this um, Sally's No More Gaps is that there is a little bit of shrinkage now I'm using one of the cake decorating um, mats here which are just little doilies and I've left them to dry for a, a, about half a day and I can already see there's a little bit of shrinkage and a few parts missing so I'm just going to put another layer over it. Um, it's really good, it sticks to itself so um, just spread on another layer and then put it aside to dry again. I'm not sure whether the dap product that Colleen had been using has got any shrinkage. She didn't mention that so I presume it doesn't um, but it's not a 
major problem. You just need to make sure that you go back and fill in any gaps that have shrunk away. Um, it's just a bit of a longer process. Now the next one thing I wanted to tell you was that you can colour any of the corking or moulding paste. Um, I'm using acrylic paint here and I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of red in which makes a kind of a soft pink but you can use um, re-inker um, inks, you can use distress inks, just press down on a mat and then mix into your pa moulding paste um, but it's quite nice to do coloured ones as well. So I'm going to just do this doily um, with the colour that I ended up making. The moulds I'm using um, throughout the video and what I show you at the end um, I've got them from a company called AliExpress and I'll have the links um, underneath the YouTube video um, in the description box um, where I got them from but apparently they are available from places like Amazon, um, eBay um, they do vary quite a bit in price but um, if you just do a cake lace um, silicon cake lace either mould or matte search you should be able to find um, quite a variety there there's quite a few doilies and um, lace strips and um, the butterfly that I've used etc. This next step is to clean the mould up um, when you're spreading the um, moulding paste onto the into the mould um, and you scrape the excess off you get um, what Colleen calls um, hazing and you need to clean that off to make the um, lace holes and things appear and the edges look nice and neat and tidy so what I'm using is um, some um, we call it isopropylene here but um, I think it gets also gets called rubbing alcohol 100% alcohol um, in a spray bottle and I'm just squirting it on to a baby wipe and rubbing over the surface of the um, lace strip here um, just cleaning it up around the edges and also rubbing it over the center of the mold where all the little um, bits of the mold are that are going to end up being where the holes in the lace are um, so I'm just tidying everything up there Just remember that um, once you've used them with the uh, moulding paste or the corking you can't use them for cake decorating so you need to have completely separate ones for that so that you don't um, contaminate the mats you're wanting to use for food. Once you finish with the dehazing um, you can just leave it aside just for a little bit just to make sure the alcohol is dried off and then you can start demoulding the moulds. This is quite an easy process most of the time. Um, with this one that I've done with the um, filler um, it peels off very easily. I just start it at the end and then just carefully peel it off. The pink doily one I just went around and um, started each of the peaks of the, the doily um, with my fingernail and then I can just go work my way around in a circle 
I'm peeling a little bit more and a little bit more off until I've got the whole thing out of the mould. Um, this fancy one with the green mould, um, more lacy, um, took a little bit more so I just got it started with um, my fingernail um, at the ends um, and started peeling it off and then um, sometimes the easiest way to um, get them out of the mould is to flip them over and hold the um, lace down and just peel, gradually peel the mat off of the lace like I'm doing here. And then when you've got so far down the strip you turn it around and do the same again from the other end just so that you're not putting too much stress on the, the full length of it. This is the one I did with the golden light um, moulding paste and it's lovely and flexible. There is a little bit of a colour difference between the um, lace here that's the, the filler and the longer strip that's the um, golden paste. Um, these three doilies show the different flexibilities and the different, I don't know whether the camera picks it up, but the different colours. Um, one of them is the Atelier um, moulding paste that I had originally, um, not quite as flexible. The second one is the golden um, light moulding paste and that's um, nice and flexible. And the third one is the no more gaps filler that I used um, and that's probably the most flexible but it's not quite as white. I guess you could put acrylic paint, white acrylic paint in it and whiten it up a bit if you wanted it really white. Now this is the doily mat that's um, been dehazed and I'm ready to demold so I'm just going to flick the um, little and uh, one of the ends of the doily out just so that I've got something to hold with my palette knife and these thin mats are really easier to flip them over and hold the um, lace down with a palette knife and just gradually peel the mat off of it um, just taking care and doing it slowly and um, then you can get the doily out. I'm really pleased with these doilies, they're going to be very useful on cards because they're just a really nice small size, some of the other doilies are a little bit big. This mat has um, two different shaped doilies but they're both quite small so they'll be very useful. Now I have had a couple of moulds that haven't been as good. I got another butterfly mould. Um, I don't know whether it's because it's thicker and squishier or whether it's um, how the mould was made but um, I've tried various different um, pastes and caulking and things in it and it, most of the time when I come to take them out it, they just break all up so
Um, and then this other mould, this sort of like half a doily, um, it's got some very, very fine um, parts of the lace and also where the flower um, are in the centre, it's got some little um, joiner pieces but they don't hold together so when you come to demold it they all break off so most of the moulds have been a great success but these two I just don't know what it is about them but they haven't been very good so I think they're a bit of a, a no-go. So some of the moulds I've made is this um, when I dyed the moulding paste mauve um, this other one I think I showed you earlier with the three different versions um, it's a lovely fine one I think I'm going to use that a lot the pink doily that I showed making before this is a strip of lace so it's a lace border and then two doilies one um, is quite detailed and the other one is quite open I love this open one I think I'm going to use that a lot too this one is my absolute favorite it's just so detailed and it's got um, highs and lows in the lace it's just absolutely beautiful um, quite a big scale so I'm not sure how I'm going to use that at this stage but I just love this one um, I've got a couple more similar to this that I've ordered so it'll be interesting to see whether I like them just as much. I apologize for this video being so long um, there was an awful lot to to cover and I wanted to make sure that I told you all the do's and don'ts so that if you do decide to have a go at it yourself um, you'll know what you're doing. Please check out Colleen's um, YouTube tutorials on 47 CMC. I'll have the link for one of hers below in the description. Um, I'll leave you with looking at some um, photos of some cards that I've used some of the bits and pieces on um, just so that you can see that they are usable on cards. I'll be back very soon with another card video um, please subscribe if you haven't already give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time bye for now